These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. All right, so our problem is to name this compound. Uh, do you want to give that a shot or should we just go over naming in general to start with? Um, we kind of learned a little, but just, I guess, let's try. try it okay, next. give it a shot. So the principal functional group here is the ketone, um, and there's an alkene, so we've got cyclohexene-ome. The most conventional way to write this would be like this. Uh, in fact, this is going to be far more common than anything else, 2 cyclohexenone. And I think that maybe uh, you were inclined maybe to put the 2 after the cyclo. That does, I, don't, uh, I don't think people generally do that. People generally would put the two in front of uh, the cyclo here, although logically you could put it in front of the hex or in front of the ene. But um, I'm not sure whether uh, that would be considered correct or not, but this is the conventional way to put it, two cyclo hexene. Um. Um, just to yeah. refresh my memory, um, double bonds have a higher priority than triple bonds, right? Yes. So I think this is what both of you came up with, al for an aldehyde. There's the methyl group for methyl. Um, which one's better? Like, which one's higher priority, al or om? That's right, al. because it's terminal. Oh, okay. So that's right, um, aldehydes get higher priority than ketones. Okay. However, there's an issue that we left out here that students generally forget, and that loses Yeah, it's very hard for students to remember that there's also stereochemistry around double bonds. There's no stereocenters here, so we don't need to worry about R and S, but there's E and Z stereochemistry. And we decided that like since the line is like that, then that means opposite. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, we know over here this is the high priority substituent. Right. And over here this is the high priority substituent. Right. Yeah. We talked about last term. We could think that E stands for epicent. 
Yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, the way that it's drawn oh, uh -huh. means that it's opposite, like, E. Because if it was Z, then it would be drawn like, yeah, yeah, okay. I think you said the same thing that, that I was mentioning. If the high priority substituents are on opposite sides, then you use the letter E. Yeah. And if they're on the same side, then you would use the letter Z. Okay. Well, the most important thing, though, is just to remember to watch out for E and Z stereochemistry. That's very easy uh, way to lose points on, on the exams. We always have to watch out for both R and S and E and Z stereochemistry. This is harder to think of because there's no wedges or dashes. In the book, they put the E in parentheses. No, that's not. Oh. I mean, it's like one four octane to eight one. Now we're trying to come up with the structure for this compound. Jay, do I just, I don't think that would be like the appropriate triangle, because it doesn't look so. Okay, yes, you had a little trouble coming up with the exact right structure there. So yes, yeah, so let's go through maybe the best way to do this. So uh, let's see, one, two, three, and here's where the ketone is supposed to be. Four. Now this should still be in a sp2 uh, trigonal planar type arrangement. So this is not where it's linear. There on the now on the number four, we're supposed to have the triple bond. So now this is the number four, and now here's where it becomes linear. Here's where it becomes linear. Here's the number four. Now I think last time we talked about maybe it would be better to actually not rely so much on bond line notation for a triple bond. and actually draw in the carbons on the triple bond, because as we were seeing, the bond line notation is kind of confusing. We'd certainly get full credit if we actually put in the carbons here. So here's our fourth carbon, and here's our fifth carbon. And now, when I put, I put in the number six, that is linear from the number five. So here's the linear portion here. Um, the number three is connected in a line, so let's see, from three to four, and then the triple bond, and then from five to six, this is all a straight line. Now we should start with the normal zigzag again. So now we have seven and eight. Okay. Now we have seven and eight. I think that in this picture here, you yeah, originally had too many carbons. Is that right? I just numbered one off, but I had the same one. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And you have. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Well, I think one thing that was confusing us is uh, maybe it wasn't clear all the time that these were separate carbons over here. So it helps to actually put in a C for the alkyne carbon. So this just takes uh, this just takes uh, time to, to to write out all the uh, angles correctly and not add or drop any carbons. Okay. 